Okay, so today uh, is an exciting day as we start the um, first day of the very last unit of summer school. The last week of summer school will be a week where you can do as much makeup work as you'd like to get the grade where you'd like it for the end of summer school. Okay, so again, this is our last unit of material for summer school. So let's begin um, with the title called Other Functions. So we're going to be looking at functions other than your linear and quadratic that we've already studied. Okay, we'll still see some of that function uh, vocabulary and notation that we saw in the last unit, but we're gonna start to take a look at some of the other functions. So let's look at example number one. It says determine the value of y so we want our answer at the end, if I'm finding the value of y to be in y equals. If the x is negative 5, so all we do is substitute into the expression on the right, negative 5 for x. And this is, remember these brackets right here, represent absolute value. Okay. So we first want to perform the operation within the symbol or within the function notation first. So negative 5 plus 12 is a positive 7. Okay? And the absolute value of 7, remember absolute value is the distance that a number is away from 0. So the absolute value of 7 is 7. Okay? On a side note, if we had the absolute value of negative 2, that would be equal to 2, as negative 2 is 2 units away from 0 on the number line. And the absolute value of 0 is 0. So we always end up with a positive result with absolute value. Example number 2. Determine the value of y if um, x is negative 48. Now we've changed functions to our square root function. And we'll take a look at each of their graphs. So again, we plug in the value of x. So negative 48 plus 49. We want to perform that operation. So negative 48 plus 49 is 1. And the square root of 1 is 1. Okay. Moving on to example 3. Example 3... Okay, when we see this bracket with all of these pieces, right, there's three pieces, this is called a piecewise function. Okay, now we have the piecewise function consisted of a quadratic, x squared minus 1 is a quadratic expression. Uh, f of x equals negative 4 is a straight line. Remember, uh, every y value uh, is negative 4, so that creates a horizontal line. And then also 3 halves x plus 1 is linear. So we have one quadratic function and two linear functions that make up the piecewise. Find f of 7. Well, then you need to look at, so if I'm finding f of 7, I need to look here at the intervals where 7, remember, because it's usually f of x. So what this is saying is x equals 7, find y. 7 is not less than 0, 7 doesn't equal to 0, and um, 7 is not between 0 and 4. So for this, um, there is no solution. I wonder if there was a typo. Because, again, 7 is not less than 0. 7 is not equal to 0. 
and 7 is not between 0 and 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another one. Let's find f of 2. So f of 2, 2 is not less than 0, it's not 0, 2 falls here. So what I want to do is plug it into this expression. So to find f of 2, we would do 3 halves times 2 plus 1. And you can do that on the calculator. But 3 halves of 2, right, 3 halves times 2 is 3, because 3 halves is 1 and a half, and 3 plus 1 is 4. So f of 2 equals 4. Now as a point, because remember it's f of x, so the x would be 2 and the y would be 4. That would be the point 2, 4. Now moving on to example number 4. Identify which type of function is graph below. And then it is multiple choice. So I would have your graphing calculator handy. And I'm going to give you some examples of other functions. So you take a look at the answer choices and say the first one is linear. So this type of function, let's just sketch them on here, would be a linear function. And you can type in any line. I just sketched it. And then your quadratic. Well, you know it's x squared, so I'm just going to use the most basic x squared. And then hit graph. So our x squared function, as you can see, is the parabola to review them all. So I'm just going to sketch a parabola right here in the center. So this is our quadratic. Okay. Now I'm going to change that y equals to the exponent of 3. Hit graph. So you can see something like that is the cubic function. So I'll use green and we'll do that say over here. Something like that is the cubic. Uh, absolute value. Now to get the absolute value um, button we need to go to math. Go to the number column and it's ABS. So if I want to see the absolute value of X, I'm going to hit there, graph. So we can see that's the V shape. So any V shape, what color haven't I used? Let's use red, but I'm going to put the V upside down. So that would be negative absolute value. So here's our absolute value. And then we have yet to take a look at the square root and cube root. So second square root of x graph. Oops. I'll go back to uh, the quadratic and I'll do square root. So square root looks like this because they're inverse operations. So quadratic and here's our square root function. And then the inverse of cubing is cube root. So go back to y equals clear. And cube root is under math. But number four, cube root of x. Let's hit graph. And we can see it looks like that, which is what we see. So I'm just going to go over this in green or highlight as this is our cube root function. Okay, and the only other one that we don't have on this picture is um, the piecewise function, which would just be pieces of um, any one of these functions. So our answer, the function that was graph, was the Q root function. Okay, number five. Find the value of f of 9 given the function just y equals f of x. So they're saying this is for any function, right? They're just naming that graph. So f of 9, what that means is, it's usually f of x, so it's saying x is 9, what's y? So we go over to 9 on the x-axis right here, and we go up to the graph, and that's the point right here. So go over 
and it's the point nine three. So really, again, when they say f of nine, they want the y value when x is nine. So our answer, f of nine equals three. Okay, so then down here when they say, here's the graph of uh, at y equals f of x, so here's some function, and this is also the absolute value. This was the absolute value function too, just a negative because it's upside down where this was a positive. So here we want to find the value of x, so we want the point where the y is 6. Now it says all values. So if we go where y is 6, which is right here, and we go right, we get this point, and we go left, we get this point. So there's two points that have a y value of 6. So following us straight down, this is 4, 6, and this is negative 4, 6. Okay, so find all values of x. We have x equals negative 4 and 4. Okay, number seven. Evaluate the function graphically. So this is a piecewise function, okay, because it's in pieces. And we need to find um, f of negative three. So remember, it says x is negative three, what's y? So we go to negative three on the x-axis, and we go up. Now my lines are so light. So I'm going to estimate that's right in the middle. Line up my ruler. So it looks to be about this point right here, which I go across, and that would be the point negative 3, 3. So f of negative 3 equals 3. Okay. Given this function here, uh, you don't need to know the name of this function. It just says uh, we have a function shown below. What are all the real solutions where f of x is 0? When I talk about real solutions, those are our x's. Solutions are x. x equals, uh, if it was a system though, our uh, solution can be points. So we only have one graph here. So I want to find, and remember, f of x stands for y. Now y values of 0. So I find 0 on the y-axis, and that's right here. So we go right, and we have this point right here, so I'm going to put stars. We have this point right here, and then I go left, I have this point, and this point. So let's start by writing on the coordinates of all of these points. So this is negative 8, 0. This is negative 3, 0. This is 2, 0, and this is 7, 0. So all of my solutions, going left to right, are negative 8, negative 3, 2, 7. Okay, and then the last two, examples 9 and 10. Determine the absolute minimum. Now absolute minimum means the absolute lowest point because there's multiple lows. So this is starting again from infinity. It's going down, it hits a low right here and then it increases, hits a max, decreases, hits a low, and then it starts to go up again. Okay, so we have two minimums, this point and this point, but the absolute is the lowest. So let's write down the coordinates of this point. I'm going to go up, that's 3, left, negative 6. So the absolute minimum, my answer, is negative 6. And then last, so we have a story here, and we need to match the function to the correct story or scenario. So a golfer hits a golf ball. So think about that. X is the time that has elapsed in seconds. So how much time in seconds are we looking at since it was hit? So that's our x-axis. And the y-axis is the height of the ball off the ground. So when you hit a golf ball, it does, um, our height increases, right? So here's an increasing height. 
However, this is saying the golf ball starts at some height, though, off the ground. Does that happen? It starts on the ground, so the height should be zero. So it should be starting at a height of zero, which is this one and this one. And the issue with this one is that the golf ball is going to go up, but it'll eventually come down. So it's not that one. And this one's saying it starts at this height and goes directly down. No. So these two, here's the ball going up and coming down. Good. So once it goes up and hits the ground, the question is, does it go up again? No. So hitting the golf ball goes up, comes down, is the answer choice B. And there is um, the notes for practice one.